ke ngreve bohë zubala që ta në mana në akolozia, me ke te në bohë zubali që të ma një në nozi, me ka rubak të zana na që të hani bari gamë do disë zë bërë dhe blodë hazë mejid, a wish ke në bohë që të hana bara do isë bëjti për dhe të bëjë e wënë të genë në klebo, një kala bara do, kanto në braja, ke ngreve bohë që ka të nabra andoli, në një kali bra andoli, a kve adolozi, në në akoloshë, Na kila rado ya le brandozia. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the land Shatayaba. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're joining me from. My name is Gladys Obishili. I'm the pres president of Gladys Obishili Ministries International Gomi, the marriage ministry with a vision of bringing back God's original intent for the marriage institution. And every Tuesday, we are privileged to come into your space to bring God's word to you. And I want to first of all start by apologizing for, you know, starting late. We have been trying to connect for over 30 something minutes now. We've been having network. Glory to God. We've been trying to connect, trying to, you know, have, you know connect and, you know, get good network delivery. But we thank God finally we are here against all odds. Haha, <laughs> the Lord says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Thank God for the privilege to be here. Better late than never. Thank God for grace. Thank God for access. Thank God for open doors. Hallelujah. I have come today, you know, to share God's word with us. Of course, if you are seeing me for the first time, I stand for marriage. Glorious marriage. A walking marriage. Praise the Lord. And each time we come every Tuesday into your space all over the world, we bring God's word, the word that the word, Hallelujah, the word that makes marriage work. Glory to God! I celebrate you, my sweet woman of God. Hallelujah! We bring you God's word each time we come into your space. We bring you God's word, the word that makes marriage work. Glory to God! My Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you. We acknowledge you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you come and have your way. There's no ministry without you. There's no ministry without you, sweet Jesus, sweet Father. There's no ministry. Come and have your way. I need this ministerial vessel of yours unto you for you to use for your glory. Lord, use it, Lord, to touch lives, to touch marriages. Lord, glorify Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, blessed is it that come in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord has placed a word in my heart for you and I today. And I trust God that as you will open your heart again and embrace this word of God. And, uh, and you are ready to apply this gospel into your marital affairs. I tell you, you will experience the glory of God continually in your marriage. You will experience God's Shekinah glory, His ever-abiding glory, His ever-abiding presence, His ever-abiding honor in your marital union. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today, I shall be reading to us from the book of Luke chapter 6. Amen. Luke chapter 6 from verse 1. I'm reading from the message translation glory to god i am reading from the message translation luke chapter 6 from verse 1 and it says hallelujah 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 to the lamb of god on a certain sabbath jesus hallelujah I i'll be right back glory to god hallelujah everything is working because God is walking them that will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Glory to God. Be right back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everything is working because God is working them. So that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you for holding on for me. Glory to God. Or okay, reading from the book of Luke chapter Luke chapter 6 from verse 1. Amen. It says, On a certain Sabbath, 
Jesus was walking through a field of ripe grain. His disciples were pulling up heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands to get rid of the chaff and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing that? Breaking a Sabbath rule. Today I'm sharing with us on the, the message I titled, Stand Up for Your Own. Stand up for your own. Glory to God. It's titled, today's message is titled, Stand Up for Your Own. And our testing from the book of Luke chapter 1. From the place I read, on a certain Sabbath, Jesus was walking through a field of ripe grain. Jesus was taking his disciples through a farmland, a field of ripe grain. Amen. His disciples being hungry, amen, hallelujah. His disciples being hungry were pulling up heads of grain, you know, pulling up corn, you know, in, rubbing them in their hands to get rid of the shaft and eating them. They were eating them, you know, with their hands not washed. Amen. You know, the, the, the law of, of, of Moses is a law of cleanliness. It's a law of keeping things clean. A law of washing. A law of cleansing. To God. Before you can take something and eat, you must first of all wash your hand. You must wash the vessel with which you want to eat. They believe so much in, in, in physical you know, appearance. They believe so much in, in physical cleanliness. As good as that may be. Glory to God. But see what happened here. Amen. They were rubbing them in their hands to get rid of the chaff and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing that? Breaking, breaking a Sabbath rule. Now you may want to wonder, what was Pharisees doing in the midst of a farm? Why would Pharisees leave their temples and you know, you know, their tabernacles and follow Jesus even into the midst of a farm? where he was going with his disciples but i want to say to us that we have a lot of people. we have a lot of people around us we have a lot of friendless friends we have a lot of what they call frenemies they come around you they relate with you they interact with you they hug you they behave as if they are for you but indeed they are not for you all they gather to do around you is to find fault is to look for when you will trip is to look out for your mistakes you know your success is a threat to them what you're doing you know to earn a living to impact your world is a concern is a challenge to them and instead of aligning with you they come around you with a guise of being for you but indeed they are not for you they are just there to seek out your fault to seek out your mistake to seek out your flaws to seek out your shortcomings so they can go announce them I've been in places and I, 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 you know, I see videos, you know, make round. I've seen people have closed door meetings. Glory to God. I've seen leaders have closed door meetings with their members. <laughs> you know, to rub minds together, to share together. But the next thing you will see, the next moment, the next day, is that you see such sharings on the social media. A leader we call the so-called, you know, disciples, so-called loyal followers, so-called co-leaders, so-called co-laborers in the assignment to rub minds together, to deliberate, to share, you know, and, and I know to share some secret thing that cannot that they can't share to the crowd, you know. But the next day you will find such things on the social media, and it gets me thinking. So who recorded it among the followers of this great man or woman of God? So who sent this to social media? An exclusive meeting held by a few to deliberate, to rub minds together, to plan the way forward, you know, or, you know, to discuss shortcomings, to discuss mistakes and the way forward, to chart a new course, a new way. But the next thing that you would discover, those things they shared in the inner room is found on the social media. And it gets me thinking, who then among the, the so-called followers, who then among the so-called disciples, the inner cycle shared this news? Who divulged this secret? Who went there with hidden cameras? <laughs> you know, to share it publicly. Glory to God. 
you know there are things you may not want to share publicly to avoid misunderstanding because your intent may be right but the delivery may not be acceptable until people you know get matured it depends on people's maturity you know people people interpret things based on their level of understanding insight and maturity so there are things that are left to sons even our lord jesus christ himself our role model glory to god there are places he will go to he will go with the 12. there are places he will go to he will go with the 70 the 500 the multitude there are places he will go to he will go with it with three glory to god depending on their level of understanding insight and maturity Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it got me thinking. It got me thinking. What was the Pharisees doing in the midst of a grain field where Jesus went with his disciples? Were they truly following his teaching? Were they hungry for what he came to do on earth? Were they willing to learn and to be blessed by his assignment? Or were they there to find fault? Let's read on. Glory to God. Luke chapter 6 from verse 1. Amen. And the Pharisees said to him, Why are you doing that? Breaking a Sabbath rule. Verse 3 and 4. Which is where the topic for today's teaching is taken from. Verse 3. Bible says, Jesus stood up for them. Glory to God. Jesus stood up for his disciples. I'm reading from the message translation. Open your Bible and go with me. Glory to God. But Jesus stood up for them. Amen. The Pharisees accused the disciples. They had legal reasons why they accused the disciples. The accusations had legal basis. The accusations had scriptural basis based on the law of Moses. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus stood up for them. Because Jesus knows the thought of man. He says, I know what is in man, so I did not give myself over to man. Jesus never gave himself over to man because he said he knows what is in man. The same man that will cry, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna today, will be the same one that will cry, crucify him tomorrow. The same man that will call daddy, 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 mommy, 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 you are my spiritual father, you are my spiritual mother, you are my mentor, you are my role model, you are my inspiration, you are this, you are that, are the ones that will still go behind you and betray you and divert your mistakes, your flaws to your detractors. Don't forget Judas Iscariot. Glory to God. So Jesus knew that though the Pharisees brought, you know, you know, accusations that were tenable, Accusations that were legally binding based on the law of Moses. But he knew what their intent was. Their concern was not just was, was not even about to fulfill the law of Moses, but to accuse. The same thing the devil is doing today. Amen. His name is called Satan. Satan means the accuser of the brethren. The accuser, his ministry is to accuse. His ministry is to come before God every now and then to accuse us. Read the book of Job. Bible says, why the sons of God appear? Glory to God. Job chapter 1. The devil also appeared. Amen. Why the sons of God appeared before God? The devil also appeared. And you want to wonder, what was the devil doing in the midst of the sons of God in heaven? He came to fulfill his assignment. Job chapter 1. Glory to God. He came to fulfill his assignment. Amen. His, his name was not Satan from the beginning. His name was not even the devil from the beginning. His name was Lucifer, the archangel of light. Glory to God. Amen. Bible says in the book of Job chapter 1 verse 9 from the New, New, New King James Version, it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered. Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth. And from walking back and forth on it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he always comes before the Father. To accuse his God's people. He always comes as Satan. Fulfilling that ministry of Satan. When he was cast down to earth. Because he committed 
you know, treason, because of pride, because he was elated, elevated. Pride was found in him. Glory to God. In the book of Ezekiel 28, you see that detail in there. Amen. You know, he comes before God to accuse you and I. But thank God that we have an advocate with the Father. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ. He is still in the ministry of intercession. He is still in the ministry of advocating for us. He is still in the ministry of mediating for us. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, glory to God. We have an advocate. His name is Jesus Christ. He stands for you to meditate for you. To mediate between you and the Father. To intercede for you. When the devil comes to accuse you, Jesus stands because he's seated right there at the right hand of the Father. And he says to the Father, Father, remember, see my hand. I died for them. I paid my price for this one. I paid the gruesome price for this one. Father, I him. Ah, let him go free. He is acquitted. He is dis discharged. He is not guilty. He is innocent. I pay the price for him. And the father being the righteous judge, we say, acquitted. Glory to God. That's why it is wisdom on us when the devil accuses us, when we go wrong to, to, re to reconcile back to God, to ask for forgiveness, you know, and plead the blood of Jesus. You know, in the law of God, people plead not guilty. They will tell you, this is the case against you. What do you plead? Blood of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome back. Everything is working. Glory to God. Everything is working. Amen. Everything is working. So when, when, when you are before the heaven, what do you plead? You plead the blood of Jesus because Christ has paid for it. So Jesus Christ in the book of Luke that we are reading our study for today, stood up for his disciples. Luke chapter 1 verse 3 from the message. But Jesus stood up for them. Amen. And he said, have you never read what David and those with him did when they were hungry? How he entered the sanctuary and ate fresh bread of the altar. Bread that no one but priests were allowed to eat. He also handed it out to his companions. Then he said, The Son of Man is no slave to the Sabbath. The Son of Man is no slave to the Sabbath. He's no slave to your accusation. He is in charge glory to god jesus stood up for his own jesus stood up for his disciples and defended them before the accusers and defended them before their detractors their adversaries their in an other jesus defended them child of god and you know what our role model is the lord jesus christ who is a role model? A role model is someone that is qualified to be to be taken after. Someone you learn from. Glory to God. The Lord speaking in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29. He says, Learn of me. Learn. Come learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. He said, Come and learn from me. Come and learn my ways. Come and understudy me. And do what I do. Follow my precepts, follow my way, and you will find rest for your soul. I bring you good news today, child of God. Your marriage can work. Your marriage can be beautiful. Your marriage can be glorious. If only you will stand up for your own. Your family can work again. Your family can be beautiful again. Your family can know peace again. Turn a man and ugly boss here. Hallelujah. Your marriage can work again. Your marital destiny can be beautiful. Hallelujah. Jesus stood up for his own. Can you stand up for your own? A lot of people in the body of Christ, they tend to, a lot of people in the body of Christ, they tend to lend their voice to the accuser. It is one thing that the devil is accusing brethren before God. And so also brethren are also accusing their so fellow brethren, joining their voice to the devil, lending their voice to Satan, Satan, Satan in Greek meaning accuser to accuse their brethren. A lot of husbands are accusing their wives before God. A lot of wives, a lot of wives are accusing their husbands before God. A lot of parents are accusing their children before God, knowingly and unknowingly. Child of God, can you reframe and retrace your step today? 
and stand up for your own. I had a story some time ago that touched my heart as a mother of a woman that lived in a particular company, a particular area. And each time they will bring the report of his son, of her son's misgivings. They will bring to her the report of her son's misbehaviors. And whenever those people come, at, whenever these people gather to accuse this woman's son before her, she will defend her son. She will tell them, yes, leave him for me. And he did this, he did that, but he's my son. Leave him for me. He belongs to me. I will take care of that. I will take. So he, she kept defending her son. She kept defending her son to the frustration of her, the, the, the complainers, of the accusers. Day in, day out, they will bring her son's report to her. See what your son did today, oh. Come, oh. And when they come to her, she will always embrace her son. All right? And plead this cause. And tell them, he is my son. He belongs to me. I will take care of that situation. Glory. She kept doing that. Am I saying you should take sides with evil? No. But I'm saying to you that we I'm saying to you we live in a wicked world. We live in a world full of deception. We live in a world where evil is becoming the order of the day. But thank God for we that are light in the world. When light appears, darkness is shattered. Glory to God. Because the dominion of light over darkness is instant. The dominion of light over darkness is instant and automatic. So we have to shine our light. So, but a day came, people of God, they brought this woman's son's report to her again. And in her low moment, out of frustration, she just altered it. You know, out of frustration, as a mother, she just said, I am tired of even the son. Just go and do to him what you feel like, what you want. I'm tired of his wahala, I'm tired of his problem. You know, and the people went away. That night, somebody said that night. That that night, witches gathered, and they had a meeting, and they said, "We have been looking for this boy to kill him because of his glorious destiny, child of God. We have been looking for this boy, but whenever we come at this boy, we, his mother always shields us from assessing him." His mother always stands as a barrier between us and him. But today, she has handed, her, handed him over to us. And they meted judgment of death to the boy. And they killed him in the spirit realm. And physically, the boy died. Because the mother, in her low moment, said, I'm even tired of this son. After defending the boy over time, I'm tired of this boy. Go, take him and go and do whatever you want with him. She thought she was dealing with normal human beings. She thought she was dealing with her normal loving glory to God. She thought she was dealing with her normal people. But unknown to her, she was dealing with the devil and his cohorts. Child of God, please guide your territory. Please protect your own. Please defend your own in the place of prayer. Your marriage will work. Your marriage can work. Stop reporting your spouse everywhere. Stop reporting your spouse to those that are already envying him or her. Unknown to you, people are already envying your spouse. They are jealous of your spouse. They are angry that you are together. They are angry that you are, your marriage is working. And here you are now reporting your spouse to them. Child of God, nobody is perfect. We are Everything is working. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stop reporting your spouse about. Can I tell you something? Whenever I'm privileged to come before you into your space to bring God's word, there is a reason. There is a cause. You may think I don't need this word today, but please, I save it. You will need it tomorrow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It is not wisdom to report your spouse to your family members. As close as you all are, it is not wisdom. If you need counselors, spiritual counselors, get. If you need marriage mentors, get them. If you need, you know, a spiritual parent, you need them. Get them in this end time. Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Are you hearing me? But reporting your spouse to your family members is not wisdom. Hallelujah. You know why? Reporting family to your, your spouse to your family is because they, ha they have some support for you, their own. They have some support for you. And there's no how they will not take sides with you. And even after you have reconciled with your spouse tomorrow, they will not still forgive. They will still resent your spouse. They will still not grudge towards your spouse. Are you hearing? The Bible says, 
do not cast your peers before the swine swine do not cast your treasure do not cast your peer precious stones precious dwell before the swine Matthew chapter 7 he said they will trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you do not cast your spare your pearls glory 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 to the lamb of god so do not cast your precious stone your joy your pearls your spouse your spouse to be before the swine they will they don't know the value they will trample it under their feet and turn again and rend you treasure your own cherish your own value your own if you need counseling go for counseling you need mentorship get a mentor it's hallelujah that is discreet with your informations you know and share your issues with them it is not wisdom to report your spouse to family members it is not wisdom because they will definitely take sides with you when you are forgiving your spouse and you are in sync with your spouse and you are enjoying your union they will not still forgive so child of god stand up for your own is your spouse not doing what you think god will have him or her to do take the, take it up in the place of prayer pray for your spouse stand in the gap Bible says, i'm looking for a man god speak he says i'm looking for a man that will stand in the gap and pray child of god pray for pray for your husband pray for your wife intercede for your spouse to be pray for your suitors pray there's nothing prayer cannot do the king's heart is in god's hand stand up for your own be a blessing to your own defend your own shield your own life is amen life is spiritual there is more to life than meet the eye there is more to life than what we can see there is more to life than, than what we can see child of god glory to god stand up for your own intercede for your own there are days that the accuser will bring thoughts in your heart against your spouse there are days the accuser who want to accuse your spouse he will bombard your heart with negative thoughts instead of cooperating with such thoughts what do you do you pray for your spouse you op you openly declare your love for your spouse you openly you know reaffirm your love it happens it happens the devil will bring to your mind the things your spouse did wrong yesterday what they are doing wrong now he will bring to your mind the way they are mistreating you oh you you are it was their birthday last year and you threw a party for them but your own birthday he or she did not throw a party for you you know they're bringing thoughts child of god refuse to cooperate with such negative thoughts refuse to be in sync with such negative thoughts play the blood of jesus on your mind and verbally speak out blessings for your spouse the devil is not your friend he may come with friendly suggestions one of the ways he gets to us is true suggestions he comes like an angel of light but he's the devil he's evil he's wicked he's brutal all he wants is to destroy your home all he wants is to break your marriage glory to god resist him Bible says resist the devil say submit yourself under the hand of the lord and resist the devil and he will flee from you the devil does not want your good he may come as a friend he may use a friend's voice to tell you your husband does not fit you your wife is not your match your wife is not as, as educated as you are your wife is not as exposed as you are your husband is of low class and you why don't you step out your life is boring come and join me let's have fun ah you have only one life oh blah 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 child of god say no refuse to listen refuse to listen ensure you weigh every suggestion with the word of god weigh every counsel with the word of god the word of god is true the word of god is sure the word of god is a solid foundation everything built upon glory to god everything built upon the word of god as last circumstance and situation everything built on the word of god stands the test of time child of god base every counsel every suggestion you hear every decision everything you read on the word of god ask yourself this counsel that i'm receiving what is his intention what is the you know you need to read in between lines what is the intent be discerning glory to god check such the scripture a woman was sharing with us some time ago how her friend will tell her 
ah, my husband gives me so, 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 so amount of money every month for the family upkeep. And she will go home, she'll be depressing, you know, she'll be crying, she'll be bemoaning her lot, she'll be feeling bad. I'm sure also fighting her husband. Amen. And then one day, she just jacked out of that oblivion and began to say to herself, Come to think of it, what am I even doing? Praise the Lord. And she now said she also now up that game. One day, the when the friend came again, I was about to tell her, How much did the husband give you this month? She said to the woman, the woman, ah, my husband gave me, she called one a big <laughs> amount of money. And the friend said, Oh, and my husband does not even give me such. She said she froze. This is the same woman that I would have broken her marriage. The woman didn't know God. The woman didn't know when she spilled. Her husband gives her small money. But the same person has been telling this woman how her husband gives her all the money, all the this and that, and that other marriage will have broken. But for the Holy Spirit and his counsel, praise the Lord. Amen. So guide your home from negative influencers. In, right, guide your home from satanic evangelists. They are poking into homes. The Bible says, the, our enemy, our adversary, the devil, is going about seeking whom he may devour. See what we read in the book of Job chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. How he was going to and fro. Jobless. All he does is to accuse the brethren. Child of God, close your door. Choose your friends wisely. Choose those you give your ears to wisely. Whoever has access to your ears controls your life. Whoever has access to your eyes, to your ears, to your door controls your life whoever has access to the doorways of your life your ears your eyes your heart controls your life so be careful of who you listen to choose godly relationships and defend your own stand up for your own the lord jesus stood up for his own against the pharisees and you know what had it been he cooperated with them and he said to them oh what you're saying is true. Ah, my, my disciples, why did you eat the grain without washing your hand? Why did you do this on the Sabbath day? Why, why are you walking on the Sabbath day? The Pharisees will say, fine. They will cast stones on the disciples and turn against, against Jesus. Because their plan will be to get rid of the disciples that are around Jesus and then turn against him. Praise the Lord. It's not because they have your best interest at heart. They're only trying to destroy your God. To, to, to destroy your strength, your, your fortress, and then get at you. Please defend your own. Plead the cause of your own. Shut your door against the devil. Pray for your spouse and your spouse to be. Hallelujah. Be a prayer person. Take your concerns to God. Amen. And receive God's wisdom over any bugging issues of your life. Receive God's, receive God's counsel over your affairs. Over all the issues of your life, seek God's counsel. Child of God, if there's anything you must not play with in this end time, it's the word of God. Search the scripture. Read your Bible. Amen. Read your Bible. Daring is the word of life. Engage the world. Don't be a Sunday, Sunday Christian. Spend time with God daily. Read your Bible. You can even get audio Bibles that will play in the background while you walk. Let your spirit man soak in the word of God. Soak in with worship songs. Anointed books. Christian books. Go to a Bible believing church where Jesus Christ is preached in truth. Read your Bible. Guide your territory. This is end time. Don't be man. If you don't read your Bible, you can, you can be susceptible to the deception of the devil. Don't fall victim to deception. Pray always. Pray without season. Pray ceaselessly. Pray ceaselessly. Pray for your marital destiny. Bible says it is not good for a man to be alone. So the devil is always sorry to God. But the devil is fighting to make man to be alone. The devil is working that man will be alone so he can deceive man, so he can destroy man. It is not good for a man to be alone, child of God. Read your Bible. Allow the Bible to be your compass to help you navigate this part of eternity and embrace this, my sweet Holy Spirit. 
embrace the spirit of God embrace the counsel of God allow the spirit of God to lead you in all you do read the word pray all you, and allow the spirit of God to lead you to guide your affairs to direct all you do don't be led by the flesh don't be led by the emotions be careful what you listen to be careful who you give your heart to and watch what God will do with your life beloved stand up for you. amen stand up for your own stand up for your own don't open your, your, yourself to the devil don't cooperate with the devil to accuse your husband don't cooperate with the devil to accuse your wife don't cooperate with your enemies they come around you as friends but they are Pharisees they come around as friends but they are enemies in this gas be sensitive stand up for your own defend your own from that place we read in book Luke chapter 6 verse 1 to verse 5 verse 3 in particular says and Jesus stood up for his own reading from message translation Jesus, Jesus defended his own against the accusers of the brethren against the Pharisees and Sadducees he stood up for his own and they were silenced stand up for your own when the devil bring negative thoughts against your spouse to you plead the blood and resist it and speak for the word of God the Bible says declare that I may be, may be justified declare that I love my spouse I love my husband I love my wife I love my sister declare it and watch how the devil will run like a toothless dog glory to God don't fall victim to the accusers of the brethren they are everywhere they come around us as friends they fraternize with us they eat our food they drink our water yet they are not for us glory to God shut your door be sensitive when they are counsels with the word of God Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 whatever is true whatever is pure whatever is of good report if there's virtue in it and all that say think on these things so examine your thought when the devil comes to, to you know to, to invade your thought life with negativities against your spouse child of God guide your thought with the blood reject it weigh your thoughts with the scriptures is this God's word God is not wicked God, God cannot tell you negative things about your spouse God cannot tell you to leave your wife God cannot tell you to leave your husband God is good everything he does is good God is kind he has your best interest at heart glory to God where the things you hear by the word of God God is for you everything is doing is geared. everything God does is geared towards your good he's working for your peace of mind learn of Jesus Christ he stood up for his disciples. He waited up the, the Pharisees against the disciples and he stood for them. Child of God, stand for your own. In the place of prayer, in the place of counsel, in the place of advice, in the place of support. Let your spouse know that you are for them. Even when they misbehave, you can talk to them prayerfully in, the, in, in your room, in your secret place. The boys say, know this so well. They say, when you catch the hyena, the elders know it so well. So when you catch the hyena and the fowl about, you know, in a bush, what do you do? You don't scold the fowl, the chicken, the hen, the bird for being in the terrain of the hyena. All right? Otherwise, the hyena will feed her nest, you know, to, to devour the chicken. What do you do? You first of all separate and save the hen from the hyena and take it home. When you now get home, you can bring your corrections, you can bring your reprimand. Praise the Lord. Don't give room to the devil in your relationship. Give no room to the devil. When you give the devil an inch, he will take a mile. When they accuse your spouse before you, defend your own. Then bring correction in your private. It is no reason to embarrass your spouse in the public. Matthew chapter 7 says, Do not cast your spell before the swine, for they will trample it under their feet and turn again and rend you. I leave you with the word of God. Child of God, make your marriage make your marriage work it is well with you thank you for joining me again today your marriage will need to work your home will know peace in the name of jesus your home will know the peace of god you will not rest you will enjoy rest you will not fail you will not fall the beauty of god rests upon your home in the name of jesus christ the god's presence as you your home 
in the name of Jesus. And I stand by the authority in the name of Jesus as one sent of God. And I command every voice of the, of the devil to be silenced over your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I silence every voice of accusation against you and yours. By the blood of Jesus Christ, our marriages work. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. Go and do well. Go and excel. I cover your heart and your mind with the blood of Jesus Christ. Even as you take responsibility. May the Lord bless. Hallelujah. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon your home. In the name of Jesus. Do share this video and to bless somebody. Help us to share it. Let it go viral. Let people you know, view it and partake of the video and be blessed. It is well with you. Stand up for your own. For those that for, for those just joining us, please go again and play it over and over. The Lord will minister to you and you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. Do share the video. Let it go viral and make some of this marriage work today. Together we partner to make marriage work because marriage is of God. Glory to God. I decree today. God's original intent for the marriage institution globally shall be established in the name of Jesus. And in case you're here joining me, I don't, I don't like to end my broadcast without doing this. If you're here to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior, child of God, you need Jesus in your home. When Jesus is in the family, there's happiness everywhere. Pray this prayer with me, child of God, and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a child, as, as a sinner. Please have mercy upon me, Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I give my life to you and give me the power to serve you all the days of my life. Today, I am a child of God. Today, I am born again in the name of Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer today, I congratulate you. You are born again. There is joy in heaven. Where one sinner that repents. Because you have caused heaven joy, your life will continue to know joy. It is well with you. Keep serving God. Keep enjoying God. It's sweet to serve Jesus. May God bless you. See you again next week, Tuesday. Same time, 4 p.m. West African time. It is well with you. And something is happening again in our ministry in this month of March. It is our first you know, quarter conference. And this time, we're having a men only conference. Is a conference organized for men, for the young, the old, the married, the single, the fathers, the priests, the husbands. You know, please invite people to join us. We'll be sharing the link on all our social media platforms. Few days, you know, to the conference is a virtual conference on Zoom. Invite your husband, invite your sons, spiritual, biological, invite your male friends, your male colleagues, your suitors, your fiancés. Invite them. Men of God are gathering to speak to their fellow men as we as we share God's word. And yours truly, God's female son, will also be there to bring God's word. We're having several speakers that will be speaking to us. Do yourself good to be part of this conference. Invite people. As we have this closed-door men's conference, men-only conference, it is well with you. Our men will take their place. No role reversal. Our priests will take their place in the altar and lead their family forward into glory. It is well. So join us. Watch out on this space on our Facebook handle, WhatsApp, Instagram, you know, Twitter, all at Gladys officially. Just watch out for us and you get the details. The flyers are everywhere. The link will be shared. Glory to God. Some days to the conference. The date is 27th of March. 2021 by 1 p.m. West African time. Do yourself good. Do your loved ones, beloved of God. And I beg you to be part of this conference. It will do you good. It is well with you. You will receive empowerment to be who God has called you to be. Go and succeed in the name of Jesus. Shalom. Once again, my name is Gladys Obishili. It is well with you. Keep making your marriage work. Peace. Shalom. Hallelujah.